Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at two-tiled hypothesis tests so we can answer questions from exercise 7D. So a two-tiled test very similar to a one-tiled test apart from the only difference is you're going to have to split up the uh, significance level into two separate parts. One for the lower probability and one for a supposedly higher probability. So this is what our alternative hypothesis testings look like. Um, for a one-tailed test, uh, the, the probability is lower than 0.4, the probability is higher than 0.4. In a two-tailed test, we're going to test for both of these um, at the same time, so whether the probability is changed or not, Okay, so whether it's lower or higher, um, and in which case the 5% significance level is going to be split up into a higher probability in which case we test at the 2.5% significance level or a lower value of p, at which case we test to the 2.5% significance level. And you always split it in half. So if it's 1%, it's now half a percent. If it's 10%, it's now 5%. Okay, so let's have a little look at a question here then. A single observation x is taken from a binomial distribution, binomial 10, 10 trials and value 1 is obtained. Uh, use this information to test the um, null hypothesis that p is equal to 0.45 against the alternative hypothesis, which is that p is now not 0.45, using a 5% significance level. So for a two-tailed test, what we're going to have to consider here is the 2.5% significance level at both extremes of the probability scale. So just writing out all of the key pieces of information here and then having a look at our graph. Now what we're testing for is that either of these tails has a cumulative probability of less than or more than 2.5%. So what we're looking for here is um, we're going to test the cumulative binomial probability up to and equal to um, one success out of 10 with a probability of 0.45 for a success of each trial. And the probability we get here is equal to 2.3%. Now, because that's less than 2.5%, that means we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and there is enough of a suspicion to say that our probability has changed, so, uh, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and we think that the alternative hypothesis is the case. All right then, so let's uh, have a look at another question here then. So over a long period of time, it has been found that in Rico's restaurants, uh, the ratio of non-vegetarian to vegetarian meals sold is two to one. In, in Manuel's restaurant, and a similar random sample of 10 people, um, one person has ordered a vegetarian meal. Um, using a 5% significance level will test whether or not the proportion of people eating vegetarian meals in Manuel's restaurant is different to that of Enrico's restaurant. So highlighting our key variables here, so binomial distribution, vegetarian or not vegetarian, um, 10 trials, probability of a third, um, we're going to test for vegetarianism or not. Uh, so alternative hypothesis is that Enrico, so Manuel's restaurant is different to Enrico's restaurant. And we've seen that from a trial of 10, we have one success. Okay, so in this case here, we're going to test at either of the extremes, so at 2.5% significance level. So we're going to test to see if um, the left-hand tail, where the x equals one variable as the number of successes is, uh, is less than 2.5%. So what you do, plug it into your calculator, one success cumulative binomial probability out of 10 Probability of a third. Don't type in 0.3 because that's wrong. Type in 1 divided by 3 and that will give you exactly a third. And you'll get 10%. 10% is way bigger than 2.5%. So as this is value is more than 2.5%, there is no reason to reject the null hypothesis. So Manuel's restaurant um, could be identical to Enrico's restaurant in terms of the number of vegetarian meals sold. Right then, well done for having a go at these two questions then. So, question one then. Uh, a single observation x is taken from a binomial distribution with 30 trials and an unknown probability. And the value x equals 10 is obtained. Uh, use this observation, h0 equals uh, 0 0.5, 
H1 is not 0.5, so definitely a two-tailed test then. Um, using it at 5% significance level. So because it's a two-tailed test, we have to split this 5% up into two 2.5%, uh, so either tail of the distribution. So what we're going to look for then is, well, is it going to be at the higher end of the tail or the lower end of the tail? I'd expect 15 uh, successes if the probability was 0.5. So I'm going to estimate that we're looking at the lower end of the tail. So I'm looking for less than or equal to 10 successes out of the 30 trials with a probability of 0.5. So plugging that into my calculator to the cumulative binomial probability is going to equal 0.049. <clears throat> now this is uh, greater than 2.5%, so it's within the acceptable range that we're going to accept our null hypothesis. So therefore, there is not enough evidence, and this is how you have to phrase it unfortunately, there is not enough evidence to reject H0. A little double negative there, so we're accepting H0 or in other words, there's not enough evidence to reject H0. In question two here, a random variable um, has 25 trials and we have 10 successes, very similar to the one before. Uh, test is taken at 10% significance level, so we'll split that up into two 5% at either tail. Um, and the null hypothesis is for a probability of 0.3 and the alternative hypothesis is not 0.3. Now, out of 25 trials, if we had 0 0.2, 0 0.3 as the probability, I'd expect 8, maybe 7 of these successes to come out. So therefore, 10 is a little bit of an overestimate on the number of successes there. So I'm going to look for the probability, or the cumulative probability, over and equal to 10 successes. And the way I'm going to work this out is because it's greater than I have to do a little flip round, 1 minus the probability less than or equal to 9. And in this case here, we're going to get, so 9, 25 trials, 0 0.3 probability. We're going to get 0 0.81, so this is going to give me 0 0.19. Um, so 19 0.05%, which is clearly way bigger than our 5%. <clears throat> so therefore, same conclusion as we had from the previous one. There's no um, reason to reject H0. Okay, then, have lots of practice on the question 7D, then. Go on to the mixed exercise and have lots of practice there as well. It's a difficult topic to master, but doing lots of questions, having lots of practice, will get you there. Thanks very much for watching.